So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar, a tour of, of web accessibility do's and don'ts. I'm Judy Tai, manager of web applications in the IT department at UCOP. For those who are still learning about web accessibility, it is the practice of ensuring that information that we post online, websites, web applications, PDFs, Word documents, et cetera, can be accessed and used by people with disabilities. Today, we've invited a special guest, Mark Sutton, to talk with us. He has over 30 years of experience in consulting on accessibility for large tech companies in the Bay Area. And we've worked with Mark for the past six years to ensure that widely used applications such as Apply UC and UC Path are accessible to applicants and colleagues with disabilities. So he'll give us a screen reader demo, walk us through some common mistakes that we can make on the UCOP website so it's impossible for people with disabilities to access or understand the content. And then he'll walk us through some real, real world accessibility issues that he's encountered in the course of doing everyday things, such as reading a restaurant website and booking a medical appointment. And then we'll save a few minutes for a Q&A at the end. So Mark, take it away. Thanks, Judy. Um, yeah, welcome everyone. I just wanted to give a quick introduction to what web accessibility is, what screen readers are. I I grew up blind from birth, so I've always had an interest in wanting to get information somehow, some way. And I was just remembering this morning that back back in grade school, they this company called Telesensory had developed this thing called an Opticon, which converts print into these little vibrating pins. And so you could read a book, a menu, but it was really slow. You, you read like 40 words a minute if you're good, maybe up to 100. Um, but you know, back then, I would take anything. So um, I would use Braille books. I got to use the Opticon. Now we're in an era where pretty much any book, article, um, any kind of business that you conduct is all done on the internet or through apps which is essentially also through the internet. And so uh, there's more of a need for people who don't interact with computers and information in the ways that most people do to have access to that information as well. And actually the numbers indicate that there are a lot of people who don't necessarily interact with information visually uh, or with using a mouse. So I use a keyboard. I use something called a screen reader. I use Braille output. Uh, people with visual impairments can use any combination of those. Some people use Braille, some people use enlarged text. Uh, a screen reader basically converts what's on the screen into speech output, Braille output, large text, and so that a person can understand that. And also, instead of using a mouse to move around, you use a keyboard. So right now, I have a demo page, the UCOP. Title is vertical bar, UCOP, Mozilla, Firefox, skip link, navigation region, level two. And I have a screen reader here called JAWS. There's a couple of them for Windows. There's a Mac screen reader called VoiceOver. This one, JAWS, has been around a long time. Uh, probably what I should do first. Lift transfer button. Slower. Slower, slower, slow, 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 slower. Is slow down the speech a little bit. I tend to run it really fast so that I can get around more efficiently. Um, I'm using the keyboard so I can go to the top of the screen. Vertical bar, you go. And that is currently the title. Skip link navigation region. Just visit the same page link, skip the main content. There's some skip links here. I'm reading by pressing the arrow keys. If I were to just keep pressing down arrow, We'd probably use up this whole hour just getting through this one page. Skip link navigation, read link graphic, University of California, Office of the President. I happen to know that there are some regions on the page that have been coded as such, so I can go to the main region. Main region. This is a page to test bad accessibility as an example test page on the training site. And so what I did is I pressed the letter, the letter Q for main region. Of course, that makes sense mnemonically. Um, what JAWS and other screen readers do is they offer Veronica. different keys to press to jump on the page. 
so that you don't have to go line by line. So if I press H for heading. This is our mask it named blue. Go blue. Heading level one. And that's a heading level one, which there already was a heading level one. Accessibility demo heading level one. Above that, you don't really need a heading for the mascot. This is our mask it named blue. If I go down. This is our mask it named blue. Go blue. One, two, three, four, five, six dot JPG graphic. Um, this graphic is labeled one, two, three, four, five, six. That's probably a file name or something. When I go to the more improved page, you'll see a better practice for how to label that. I also hear that the color contrast on this particular graphic isn't very good for people with low vision. So we'll look at a, a different uh, situation there. Uh, there's a table on this page. Table with three columns and four rows. Column one, row one, animals. Cat, row two. Year one, zero, column two. Um, so this table is such that I'm not sure exactly how it's laid out, what the column headers are and such. So instead, I'm going to jump straight to the demo, uh, the good demo. Menu, file, one of seven, alt menu, bookmarks, menu, show all bookmarks, control, plus shift, plus o, one of one, one, demo page with error, two, demo page fixed, two of fifth, enter, leaving menus, fix, dash, bad, accessibility, demo, vertical, bar, you, dash, mozilla, fire, fixed. And my speech sped up because my default, so let me just close that. Shut. Slower, slow, 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 slower. Slow that down a little bit. And now we'll go to the table. Table with three columns and four rows, animals by year, column one, row one, animals. So we have a nice... Heading for the table. Cat, row two. Year one, zero, column two. Year two, one, column three. End of row, dog, one, row three. Mouse, zero, row, end of row. Um, so I can navigate through the rows and columns. You heard some of that information on the first page. Screen readers have gotten fairly good at trying to discern what column and Stephanie row Beecham has left the meeting. headers are. Um, but it's really good to give, pro programmatically give row and column headers to tables so that people using screen readers can really navigate those tables and know what's in the tables. It makes a lot of difference. Um, you'll also notice the title of this page. Title is fixed dash bad accessibility demo vertical bar uka bem dash mozilla firefox. So that has a more Kimberly Atkinson complete page title, and PDFS heading level three. We have a few more headings. So I'm pressing the H key and it's allowing me to jump through the page and get to different sections of the page so that I don't have to move so slowly through the page. Um, I can show the, the PDF examples. I'm wondering if in the interest of time, we can come back to those later because they, they demonstrate some of the same stuff as we have demonstrated here with headings and tables, uh, graphics that aren't labeled correctly, which reminds me, let's go back to that one graphic. Bird dash blue macaw graphic. University of California, bird dash blue macaw graphic. So we have a bird macaw. Heading level three animals. Bird, this is our mascot named blue. Go bird dash blue macaw graphic. And that's a lot more useful than one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, why don't I go to a few other pages just to show some examples of what happens on web pages. Alt B, menu, bookmarks, one, two, three, four. Lab Corp vertical bar pre-check, enter, leaving menus, bird dash. So I happen to, um, there's been plenty of times when Page has one lab corp. I've wanted to make appointments, book airline tickets, um, make reservations on restaurants where the page prevents me from doing it. Another example, buying concert tickets and they have these timers. And if you don't fill out the information quick enough, then the tickets go away. And um, uh, so the more accessible the page is, the more likely you are going to be able to actually successfully buy those tickets, make reservations, have a life like the rest of your uh, friends and family, and be able to do those things that now pretty much all require you to do from the internet. Lab vertical bar, main region, link multiplication, next cancel. Whoop. Slower, 
Slower, slow, slow, slower. Main region. Link multiplication X cancel. So multiplication X cancel. I have a feeling that that's probably a cancel or a close button. Probably visually there's something representing that that's more indicative of what that link does. Heading level one, schedule an appointment. Heading level two, location details. Definition list of one items, location. 3000 Colt Berkeley, con nine left parent 510. And you'll notice I'm kind of skipping some of the text. As soon as I press the arrow key, it interrupts the previous text so that I can get to what I'm looking for more quickly. List end, service, service, combo box lab work. Will you be fasting? Yes, appointment, will you be fasting? Yes, no. So right there, it says, will you be fasting? fasting? Yes, no but there's no way for me to choose yes or no. Those are probably uh, buttons that aren't coded as buttons. So- Appointment details, choose date and time button unavailable. I can't choose the date and time and I'm imagining that's because I haven't chose yes or no yet. I'm not a robot checkbox not checked, space. Main region, recapture frame. I'm not a robot checkbox not checked, unavailable, not checked, checked. Okay, I can at least tell them I'm not a robot. Link privacy, link terms, next button unavailable. And now the next button is also unavailable because I haven't chosen the yes, no. So basically I am i can't go any forward, any further forward here because of that situation up above where the buttons are not coded as a button. So I can't choose it and there's nothing, nothing I can do about it. <laughs> so that's just a, an example of real life situations where when one thing on a page can provide an obstacle that will keep you from going any further. Um, we've done, you know, to bring it back to sort of more to UCOP uh, type stuff, done a lot of work on the application for admission to, vertical bar -check. to um, to make that application work. And if you can't even fill out an application to get into the University of California, then uh, there's not gonna be very many students, blind students, because independence is one of the important things is to be able to do these things yourself and not have to ask somebody else, hey, can you fill this out for me? Um, there's privacy issues, there's just independence related issues. So- um, Choose date and time button unavailable. So that's a particular calendaring situation that doesn't work. I'm gonna one of seven bookmarks menu. Show all bookmarks. Can edit this bookmark. Can one, dev two, three, Adobe four, Lab Corp five, Berkeley Dining six, menu and dash into seven. Available campsites for Black Mountain. Enter leaving menus. Choose date and here's another another example of page has no links. Available campsites for Black Mountain where tables are being used for calendaring. Table with seven columns and one row. Column one, row one, sun. And in this case, in one table, we have... Mon, two, red, two, five. Sunday, Monday, two, we have all the days of the week. Sat, table end, blank. Table with seven columns and four rows, 30, 31. And now in the next table, we have the dates. John one, column three, two, column four, three, column five, four, column six, campground full, row two. And now I go down to something that says campground full, but I have no idea what date that is. Large group campsite left parent up to 12 people right parent, column five. It just says column five. Campground full, column four. Um, and, and those aren't also, they aren't coded as links. I'm not sure if they are links, but uh, I guess I could take that information if I knew which day it was pointing to. So, so that's another example of when you have tables that are done visually, but not coded programmatically, you can end up with problems not knowing what's in the table. So the uh, menu, bookmarks menu, show all bookmarks control plus shift plus all one one. time on bad examples. So let's try to find a good example. Edit this bookmark, bookmark, bookmarks, tool bar, other bookmarks, sub menu, two of two, one, demo page with it, two, one, oh, 15, Southwest Airlines vertical, 14, 15, South Enter, leaving menus. I was just looking at the Southwest Airlines page this morning. So I don't have a lot of current familiarity with it. Page has four regions, Southwest. Um, some years ago, Southwest was one of the worst pages on the internet for bookings and just for accessibility generally. Southwest Airlines, skip to visit link Southwest. Log into viewpoints, log in, open flight link, create account. Let me slow it down again. Slower, slow, slow, slower. Espanol, navigate, flight vertical bar, hotel vertical bar, car vertical bar, vacations, opens, fly out, button collapsed. Okay, so it tells me there's a button collapse, there's a fly out, I'm going to press enter. Enter. 
Press here to close this modal flight. Put the flight manager reservation list of 11 items. Link flight. Okay, we'll go for flight. Enter. List with 11 items. Flight link. Southwest Airlines dash book of flight M dash Mozilla Firefox. Southwest cargo. Skip the content button. Vertical bar. Book of flight heading level one. Travel tips menu. Special accommodations menu. Recent searches edit combo. Re Depart edit combo required. And there's a command in most screen readers to go to the form field or combo box. So I went straight. Slower, slow, 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 slower. Depart required edit combo. Uh, to the field where I can type in the airport, departure airport. Enter. S. S Expanded o. required. Depart. FO. List box. San Francisco area airport. Dash San Francisco. Cod dash FO selected. Two of four. Unselected. Unselected. San Francisco area airport. Dash San Francisco. Enter. Plan A trip land. Depart date in MM slash DD slash AI format. Validates from June 15, 2021 to Jan 5, 2022. To use a date picker, press the down arrow. Edit required. Six. And there is an example of a good calendar date picker situation because now I can press down arrow. Unselected. Before noon selected. Two. Unselected. Noon dash 6 p.m. selected. Three or four. And it looks like I wasn't in the date picker, but I was in the um, time of day. Plan A trip landmark. Main date picker activated. June 16, 20. Wednesday, June 23rd, 2021. Okay, so we'll go for that. Plan A trip landmark, main navigation, main region, book of flight region, depart date in MM slash DD slash AI format, validates from June 15, 2021 to Jan 5, 2022. To use a date picker, press the down arrow, edit required, 6 slash 23. Keyboard instructions up slash down arrow, key colon access the widget shift plus right slash left arrows, key colon previous slash next month, date picker activated, June 23, Wednesday, June 30th, to enter. Plan A trip landmark. And what I had to do there was actually press enter to choose the date. I tried to speed up the process by pressing the tab key to get to the next field, but I actually had to choose it first. So um, each page will work a little differently in that regard. Keyboard instructions. Wednesday, June 23rd. Time of day. List. Plan A trip landmark. Main navigation, main region. Book of flight region. Time of day left pair and optional right pair and noon dash 6 p.m. Plan A trip landmark, main navigation, main region, book a flight region, passengers fly out, opens passenger selection, modal edit combo collapse required, arrive edit combo collapse required. Blank, blank. Required invalid entry, time of day, return date in MM slash DD slash AI format, unselected, noon dash 6 p unselected, all enter, plan A trip landmark. Um, so I could go through this whole thing, but the point here is that I can go through and fill out the different fields. And it may take a little bit of time getting familiar with this particular site, but the basic structure has been programmed into the web page to be able to do this successfully. Virtual PC cursor. Um, Alt key, menu, bookmarks menu, show all bookmarks, control, bookmark current tab control, one, demo page, two, three, four, five, Berkeley, six, seven, eight, nine, accessible, ten, 12, CNN dash breaking news, latest new enter, so leaving menus, example of CNN dash breaking page has 81 CNN. Well programmed page. I can go to the CNN news page and each news story is a list item. Link CNN, vertical bar 6 slash 15 so slash 20 20 20 vertical. the list item command, which is the letter I. Bullet link while daily deaths have decreased in recent months. A dangerous new coronavirus there. Bullet link CDC now calls coronavirus. Bullet link first state to shut down in the US fully real. Bullet link what you need to know about California's bullet link Disneyland welcomes. And I can just browse through the articles. And that's so much faster than having to hit a down arrow key and get through graphics and other page elements. And as soon as I get to a story I wanna read, I can press enter and away I go. Um, one more on the good page side. Okay, menu, bookmarks menu, show all, one, demo page with errors, one, open all the tabs, 15, Southwest Airlines, 14, jobs dash University of California, 14 of 15. Actually two more, the jobs page on the University of California. Enter, leaving menus, jobs dash University of California, YouTube video player. Title is job stash University of California. Visited heading level one keywords edit enter keywords. So I press the E key to get to the form field. Enter. And keywords edit enter keywords. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I want to be UC president. Re so I'll just type president. Press president. Enter. enter. Job search results stash University of California. M Mozilla Firefox. Job search results stash University of California. Jobs. Search button. Viewing colon one and dash ten of sixty seven results. So I uh sixty seven results one of ten. Sort by colon. Sort by colon, combo box relevance. We have filters, but I can go to the first Randy Jenkins has joined the meeting. Vice President for Human Resources, heading level three link. And any heading level three is... Office of the President, heading level four. 
Heading level four is more detail about that job. So if I press the number three. Associate Vice President and System White Controller heading level three link. Chief Information Officer and Vice President Information Technology Services heading level three link. Administrative Specialist Office of the President heading level three link. And I can just go through the page that way. Heading level four office of the heading level four full heading level four category colon general admin heading level four acquisition colon one eight heading level four for you internal applicant left pair new see right pair transforming the work link new full administrative specialist office of the president job description and office of the president. And I just press down arrow until I got to the link to view the job posting. Um, so that was on my way to Alt -E, menu, bookmarks menu, show all bookmarks, control plus shift plus o, one, one. to another. One, demo page with errors, 115, open, fifth, 13, accessible chords and scales for guitar, med, 12, CNN dash breaking news, latest news, enter, leaving menus, CNN dash breaking news, latest news and videos, M dash Mozilla Firefox, oh, CNN, CNN. One I wanted. Alt -E, menu, bookmarks menu, show all bookmarks, control plus shift plus o, one, one, one. demo page with errors, open, fifth, four, four, 12, CNN dash break, 11, BBC dash home page, enter, leaving menus, BBC dash home page, M dash Roy Felicia. Done a really good job with their pages of having. BBC dash home visited link home page unidentified stones in SA start time in Rush Africa. Slower. BBC BBC dash home page. Heading level two accessibility links. They have some links at the top. List of two items. Same page link skip to content. Skip to content. Link accessibility help. And then you have a accessibility help right there at the top. List end. Link sign in. BBC navigate list of nine items. Welcome to BBC.com Tuesday 15 June heading level two. And then again, you have headings on the page, so I can just jump by heading. Usually, when you're using a screen reader, you'll either jump by heading. Pilot had no choice in Belarus diversion. Dash right there. Heading Leroy 2020 updates. Colon Hungary v Portugal. Heading level for Windows 10 to be retired in 2025. You can get to the important elements of the page. Darlene Alvarez has left the meeting. Now, of course, you want to be able to. Veronica Kemp. Though, in order to use those headings, they have to be programmed as headings and not just shown as bold text. Chris Parmelita. But actually programmed in the HTML code as a, as a heading. And so that pretty much shows that page. I think we have enough time. How are we doing on time? Does anybody have any questions? Um, yeah. Maybe we're, we we're good on up. time. We're at the halfway mark. OK. Uh, then I think there is time to show, show the PDF examples as well, because PDFs are another really common way of distributing information. And if PDFs don't have structure, tag structure with headings and proper has left the meeting. and graphics that are labeled, then you encounter the same problems as you do on the web. Task switching, meeting controls, Zoom. Tour of web accessibility, dots and dots, confirmation, dash Mozilla Thunderbird. Tour of web escape, BBC dash home page, Windows D. Folder view list view, downloads, 10 to 14, full enter. Downloads, items view, multi-select list one, PDF dash needs dash accessibility dash help dot PDF, two or three. So I'm going to go to the first one. Enter. Well, actually, Mark, um, before you start, we have some questions from Farouk. Okay, let's let's take questions. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for sharing this with us. It, this is really enlightening for me. Um, two questions I have. One is that from your perspective, from your preference point of view, do you feel um, it would be beneficial to you when you approach a website and let's say you were trying to book a reservation since you gave the Southwest example, uh, do you think that the designers should provide sort of like a fork in the road upstream so that you can enunciate maybe with your microphone, I wanna make reservation and then it would take you to a page where it only has the pertinent information on that page and not everything else. Because it seems to me, at, at least anyways, as I'm listening to this, I'm, I'm going, oh my God, every little tag, every little icon is getting articulated. <laughs> now, maybe to you, because this is your, your way that you, that you operate, uh, you're used to it and you're able to digest all those audio cues, because obviously you receive your information through audio. Uh, and we tend to gloss over the stuff we're not interested in because we're visual. That was my first question. Okay. Um, do you want to ask your second? I'll answer your first question then if you have a follow up, um, which I think is a good question. And it brings up a good point that there are pages 
websites that offer a special accessibility mode. The problem with that is that oftentimes that mode doesn't get attention when new code gets added, sites are getting updated all the time. And so you end up getting um, uh, an experience that's behind everybody else is what really ends up happening. The other thing is a lot of times when I'm doing stuff on the internet, I may be doing it, uh, helping somebody else with it. So I wanna know what their experience is like, what, what the pages they're looking at. So there's enough um, of, the, of the features built into screen readers now but using the structure of web pages to be able to, I mean, you saw all the stuff that I had to navigate through, but once, once you know what the page structure is, you can navigate pretty quickly and fill out forms pretty quickly uh, using what the screen reader has to provide. And that way you're having the same experience as somebody else. Um, okay, yeah, your, your answer articulates a problem, I guess, with the industry in general, that the accessibility, accessibility design pages tend to be stale or are more likely to become stale. Yeah, uh, unfortunately that's, a, that's the case, yeah. yeah. That's something for all of us to try to address in our own ways. The second question I had was that your method of interaction with the web, is there such a thing, do you have a, in your own uh, mind, an ideal method. If there's two or three things that you could change to really make life easier for you, what would that be? Um, earlier, you were talking about uh, speech recognition to be able to just say, hey, I want to do this, I want to do that. Um, I still like using a keyboard. It's faster speech recognition types of systems. Uh, for example, um, all the, the home devices, um, Siri, Google Home, Alexa, et cetera, uh, those have a lot of limitations and a lot of times their interpretations are incorrect. So I like using a keyboard because I can be really specific. I think the more structure there is to a page, uh, the better so that I can jump straight to where I need to enter the destination airport, uh, the arriving airport, once I get to know that page, I can do it really quickly and other screen reader users as well. When those pages change frequently and the structure of the page changes, that's when it can be difficult. Or when some of the controls on the page are improperly coded. So you go to um, find the next button and it's not coded as a button or the edit field is not a proper edit field that kind of stuff. So really just coding to standard is um, is all I want and all I ask for and I think is important is just following standards. Um, to go on top of that, sure, if there were some good instructions in cases, um, screen reader help just to point out, oh, there's regions on the page and in this region you'll find this and in this region you'll find that and a good description of what you're going to encounter when you're on the page. I think that would be really useful as well. Thank you very much. Uh, and just a little tidbit, it says there are 285 million people worldwide who due to some disability are suffering from either low vision, et cetera, et cetera. And 39 million of those are blind and cannot access any of the content via site. So I think that number, I don't know how accurate it is, how up to date, but it gives us some perspective of the uh, user population that we should have in mind when we design web pages. Thank you again. Yeah, that's a good point. And the other point that that brings up is that not everybody has used screen readers basically their whole life like I have and has the experience on how to navigate these situations. And so uh, the, the better, the, the more redundancy built into the pages, the, the easier they are so that it goes beyond just following a standard, but really making the pages efficient, uh, the better it is for everybody. Because not everybody's going to figure out this stuff right away. 
Thanks for the question. Anybody else? Okay, where was I here? Title is one. PDF dash needs dash accessibility dash help dot PDF dash Adobe Acrobat Real. San Diego, 1960. One. PDF dash needs dash heading level three University of California from Wikipedia. And let me slow speech down. Slower, slower, slower. Link click here. So this is one of the situations that comes up a lot where you'll get to something that says click here, but you don't know where that's pointing you to. And there's a command in most screen readers where you can get a list of links. So I can go to um, heading list dialog, heading list escape, University of California, links list dialog, links list view, click here, one of one. The link, only link on the page just says click here. If it said click here to go to escape, the, University of, um, or it didn't even say click here because a link obviously means you clicked it, um, then then you would have more information about that. So that's another one of those efficiency things and one of those accessibility dues. From Wikipedia, link click for the University of California table with four columns and 11 rows. Column one, row one, campus, year established, nickname. And then we have another table here. Wrapping the top, five graphic. And then we have a graphic that's just called five graphic. So I'm gonna get out of here and bring up the other page. Alt F4, items view multi-select list box, one, PDF dash need, two, fix dash PDF dash enter. And we'll go to the fixed version. University of California building graphic. Page has two headings and no university. University of California building graphic. And it's the University of California. Slow, slower. Slower. Good to know. And then we have the table here. Oh, let's go to that link. Let's see what the link says. University of California building graphic. Uh, let's go to the top. Two. Quit heading level one, University of California. From the university, university of the University of California students. Quit heading level table with four column camp. Table with four column. Two. Heading level one, University of California fact sheet. From the University of California, University of California building graphic. No links. All right, there's no links on this page. I'm not sure where the click here thing is, but let's go to the table. Table with four columns and 11 rows. Column year established. Nickname, column three. Year established. Birthday, Irv, Los Angeles, 1919. Row five. Nickname, Bruins, column three. Mascot, Joe and Josephine Bruin, column four. End the row. Okay, so I can just whip through that table and find out anybody's mascot. Let's go back. Nick Ear Cap beginning a row. Irvine, row four. Ear okay. established tonight. Who Irvine's mascot is. Nickname, Anteaters, column three. All right, they're the Anteaters. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what I wanted to show about the PDF stuff. And yeah, I think at this point, I want to open it up again to questions or if Amy or Judy have anything to add that I've probably missed. In trying to keep things moving and and not uh, bore you all with screen reader speech. Well, we have a couple of questions, um, Michael Kuziak. Well, hey there. I I really appreciate this. Um, it's been a, a, a it's actually been fun to learn more about accessibility and how that informs just overall better website construction. And you mentioned that in your your previous screen, and I just want to thank you for that because I I think I, I know I've really endeavored to really think about. What's the essential information? Why are we doing this? Um, I would love to hear your thoughts on PDFs generally. Um, mm -hmm. the, the unit I'm in, um, historically, we, we put a lot of content in PDF. And I know historically, we're not necessarily at UCOP going back uh, backwards. But the conversation I've been having in my department is we should do what we can to avoid to put it in a PDF in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, would you agree with that assessment? Yeah, it's much easier to go to a document that's structured with HTML. In some cases, even Word documents are better. Um, oftentimes, PDFs just turn out to be hard to navigate. Um, they can be they can be tagged with headings and proper tables and labeled graphics and proper list um, structure but oftentimes that doesn't work out. And so it just seems that more often uh, documents, Word documents and also web pages end up being a lot more successfully structured. Um, but yeah, I mean, PDFs are there. It's a way, it's easy to create them. So just, it's a balancing act, but yeah, I would say generally PDFs cause more trouble 
<laughs> but I've appreciated that I'll find PDFs that are inaccessible than I'll find web pages that are inaccessible. It's funny you say it's easy to create a PDF. Um, what I have found is like it's really easy to create a PDF. That's it's really tough to sort of backtrack it and make it accessible. Right. Um, sometimes what I'm dealing with is like something being handed to me, um, and it's having this conversation like, "Hey, you know, really shouldn't publish this because it's not accessible." Um, I'm wondering what what are like PDFs that are accessible. Sorry. I, what about like truly historical documents? Um, I'm wondering if this is sort of the conversation between when you should create an image versus using a PDF. Uh, one example, for example, on our, our site, we have a copy of the Articles of Incorporation for the University of California. They're scripted writing, right? Mm -hmm. um, would a better practice be for us to have a transcript for it? Or is it okay to, to have a PDF that is of an historical nature? Yeah, in my opinion, that's a historical document. You want to preserve the, the actual handwriting of that. It would be good in that case to indicate that, you know, graphical PDF um, so that somebody using a screen reader knows, okay, this is going to be a PDF that I'm not going to be able to read. And then to have a text version. So you have a graphical version and then a text version that would be the translation of that handwritten text. Thank you. That's really helpful. And I suppose my last question comment would be, um, it would be really great to like have classes on how to make forms. Uh, um, I can't tell you how often I'm handed something that's a Word document and it's seen as a template that needs to be used or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it again, you have that conversation. Can't do this, um, but I really understanding what's the purpose of a form, uh, what's like a best practice for, for creating it. Uh, in my unit in particular, we're often trying to demonstrate best practices to other campuses. Like if you have this form, you, you need to have these 10 elements. So um, thinking about forms is sort of where I'm, I'm kind Very of deep. in my journey with accessibility and I'm just kind of putting it out there um, because I don't think we can create something like a Southwest Airlines website for some of the things that I'm talking about. But I'm wondering like, what's the happy sort of medium knowing that a lot of the things that we do is we're guiding campuses on maybe certain types of transactions they engage in and we might want to tell them well here is a model form you might want to use or maybe we just focus on the data elements etc but i'm just putting that out there for the universe yeah i think that's a good idea to to go beyond what happened today which is more of an introduction to the why accessibility and just a little brief exposure on the how to but to go to the next level, getting more in depth on, okay, how do you create these forms? And how do you create accessible forms? And what would that look like? And we didn't talk much, I didn't talk much today about forms, but oftentimes that's something that I'll encounter on the web is form fields that aren't labeled and you're filling out forms and you don't even know what is being asked of you for a particular form field. Um, but to be able to just tab through that document and no first name, middle name, last name. Um, one of the pages that I didn't get to had examples of um, required fields are labeled with blue instead of what's now more typical is to have an asterisk. And so when you tab to that field, it'll say star, and then you know, okay, I have to fill out my first name or last name, phone number, et cetera. Um, but that, that would be a fun workshop to do is to get more in depth into stuff like that. So thanks for putting that out to the universe. All right, thanks. Uh, then we have Katie Fitzpatrick. Hi. Um, Hi. Is there on the um, at UCOP or across the system, do we have access to a specific kind of screen reader so that we can run this on our sites so we can hear what someone else hears? Because that was without question eye-opening, to use vernacular, um, to actually have what we have put out there read back to us as I someone have... would experience. Yeah, I don't know um, if there's, Laura, let me... what I was using today is one called JAWS, which is a paid screen reader. There is a screen reader called NVDA, uh, non-visual desktop access is what the acronym stands for. 
and that's a free screen reader. It's shareware. And so anybody could download from Will uh, and, of, and also on the Apple side of things, uh, voiceover is built into the Mac and can be used in the same way. Um, so yeah, you can get started uh, using one of those screen readers, NVDA or voiceover, for example. Uh, Windows also has something called narrator built in, but it's not quite a screen reader, but it keeps getting better and better all the time in terms of the access that it provides. But that's a good way to just turn it on and maybe tab through, learn a few basic commands and just see how, how that feels. Thank you. Yeah. And we can share out some of those resources. Uh, Will Pines posted in the chat the link to download NVDA. And what I find useful with that is an article from WebAIM that takes you through some of the keyboard shortcuts for NVDA. So we can send those out at the conclusion of this. Yeah, that would be great. And you don't have to learn all of them. These screen readers keep adding more and more shortcuts. It's like, I remember Microsoft Word used to be a real basic um, word processor. And now you can do so much with it and it's hard to just keep up with all you can do. And screen readers are kind of in that same league where, um, you know, if you know a few of the commands, you can do a lot to just understand a little bit of how they work with a particular page. Great, and then we have a question from Rachel Hugh. Hi, Mark. Um, I had a question about um, kind of help documentation. Um, a lot of the systems that we um, design and, and use um, in my department have a, a voluminous amount of um, help documentation. And in the past, they've run the gamut from being separate HTML pages to PDFs. Um, and then another form lately that people have been wanting to utilize is having tooltips sort of in context in the system as they're trying to sort of work through the, the workflow of a system. And I wondered if you had any preferences to any of that sort of like help in context help or sort of like full page out of context help um, as you kind of move through different websites and, and encounter them. What is most helpful for you? Yeah, I think tooltips can be good if they're really short. Uh, but the thing with tooltips is they usually come and go and that makes them harder to review. Whereas if you have some longer text that's available, let's say at the bottom of the page, um, a lot of times what the practice is, for example, if you're using the online Gmail program or uh, Twitter's web interface, you can get keyboard shortcuts and you press a command, usually it's from uh, shift plus question mark, so um, capital slash. You'll get, up, uh, get a list of keyboard shortcuts. And I, I like that model because you have a window that pops up, you can review it. And when you're done, you hit escape and you can go back to doing what you're doing. And that way, the developer is not limited to a certain amount of uh, length of line, et cetera. Um, so, so I like something that's easy to find. On that BBC page that I demonstrated, there was an accessibility help link. And again, that would just bring up a, another little page that you can quickly dismiss when you're done. Thank you. Yeah. And that would have been a good, um, enhancement to, for example, the Southwest West page, which there's a lot of complexity going on there, is to have some, not just key commands, because for that page, it's pretty much use your screen reader, but some description on how that page might be organized. Um, I do my, um, I have an account with Bank of America, and they've done a lot of really good work with their web page and with their app, and they give little tips. Uh, throughout the page, oh, you know, press here for a screen reader readable PDF and um, press here to expand this particular section. And those things are really helpful too. So just having tips spread throughout a page is, is quite useful. And it also lets you know that somebody's paying attention and that you're likely going to have a positive experience on that page. Fantastic. 
Right. Um, I think I was reviewing um, some of the things that we were supposed to cover. Could we go back to the UCOP bad accessibility page? You, yeah. you discussed um, the link in the PDF, but I think there were links on the page as well. Are you talking about the page or the PDF? The, the page, the bad accessibility bad page. page. Oh, yeah. And there was one I remember I forgot. Um, the mega menu thing. Downloads. JAWS home use. BBC dash home page M dash Mozilla Firefox. BBC dash home page M dash multi menu. Bookmarks menu. Show all bookmarks. One. Demo page with errors. One of the enter. Leaving menus. Windows 10 of your tired in 2025. As new OS unveils heading level 3 link. Vertical bar you M dash Mozilla Firefox. Vertical bar you Vertical bar. Vertical bar you Vertical bar you Scribbling navigation reads. Slower, slow, 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 slower. Okay. So there was a link here. I believe there was also a click here link on this page. Links list dialogue. Links list view. Chief financial officer. Budget analysis. Capital. Click here. Fifty one of ninety nine. Okay, so that's another example. I'm just going to move to that link. Move to link button space blank content region star dash link. Click here to go to the web name website to download the wave tool. Yeah. So in the improved version, the information about where you would go to if you clicked here would be shown. Um, was there something else that uh, stood out for you, Judy, that you wanted to? highlight here? Well, um, if you could bring up that window again, that keyboard shortcut showing all the links on the page, I think that's also um, a little mind boggling that there are 99 links on the page. Uh, links list view, click here, 51 of 99. 99 links, yep. Bad PDF, fixed dash back, chief financial, budget analysis and planning, 50, capital asset strategies and finance, 56 of 99. And so another example of that. Escape. Content region, main region, link, click here. Let's see. Vertical bar, UCOP. Skip link, visit the same, skip link, link, traffic, university of main menu, navigate, list of free items, link jobs, link people, search, search, edit, list end, list of four items, visit link home. Slow, slow, slower, link about, visit link organization, link, skip organization menu. Okay, so I was just pressing down arrow, and now I get to this thing that says skip organization menu. List of six items, nesting level one. And below that is a list of six items. I'm not going to skip yet. I'm just going to arrow down. Link chief financial officer. Link budget analysis. Link capital. Link financial. Link procurement. Link we, we don't actually see it, Mark. That's weird. Oh. Maybe because you're arrowing. I don't know. Link, link, Maybe, link, yeah. link, link, list of links. Skip organization menu. So I'll tab. Banner region. Main menu. Navigation region. List with four items. List with six items. Chief financial officer. Link budget analysis and planning. Link capital asset strategies and finance. Link. Any better? Yep. You see it. So okay. <laughs> that's what accounts for a lot of the 99 links. <laughs> So JAWS sees all those links, whether they're visible on the page or not, because they've been programmed in the off-screen model the has left the meeting. that JAWS pays attention to. So um, this points out how some menuing structures can be pretty squirrely, because if you have a menu that's totally expanded, uh, then you have to walk through the whole menu as opposed to menus with submenus and collapsed and that sort of thing. So, and and I'll keep tabbing. Financial accounting link, procurement ser risk services list with seven items, UC operations link. And I have a list with seven items. I'm not sure, I think that's a separate list, but not a sub list of the first one. Energy and system, human research, information, operation, strategy and program, UCOP operations link, list with five items, academic affairs link. Okay, so we have different clusters of links and I think Ideally, those would be categorized so that you could go into each category and get those links. Right, but if you could shift tab back to the skip organization menu, that lets you bypass this whole thing, correct? List with seven items, you can oper strategy and program, operational, information, human, re energy and system, UC oper list with six items, risk service, procurement service, financial account, capital assets, budget analysis, chief financial, skip organization menu link. There we go. Enter, initiatives link. And it said initiatives. List end. That's, that's the next link. Mm -hmm. List end. Main menu navigation region end. Breadcrumbs navigation region. List of two items. Link UCOP training dash Amy Chen Grader. Okay. So now I've just skipped that big menu and now I'm to the main meat of the page, which is. Visited link bad dash accessibility. List end. Breadcrumbs navigation region end. Heading level one accessibility demo. Main region. This is a page to test bad accessibility as an example test page on the training site. From uh, Karen Orlando. The this may be an example of a bad page vertical bar you but i'm at the top and i can press the go to main region on page command main region karen orlando has left the meeting and um and it tells me who's left the meeting now um 
And I get straight to that information that I was previously just arrowing through. This is a page to test pad accessibility as an example test page on the training site. We, we have one final question with two minutes left in the meeting. Uh, Michael Kuziak is making a return. Good. Um, one thing that I, I discussed with my, my team a lot are I left the meeting. Um, I really appreciated you pointing out, like you don't say click here, but you, you know, provide context for it. Um, yeah. Your thoughts on when you see footnotes or how to do in-text citations, if you have any feedback on how to do that. In, a, in, a, in an effective way. Um, would they be same page link footnotes or on a different page? Because there are, JAWS and other screen readers do make that distinction. Between, they do. Uh, in page or uh, external or within the same site. Or the process left the meeting. So, um, so yeah, as, as long as those links are Merit of attached has left the meeting. coded as such, to tell you that, okay, that's on the same page. We'll go down here. A lot of Wikipedia links, for example, will do that. They'll just take you further down the page. Got so, it. So Does that impact fun. the flow and the ease that you're reading the information though? Uh, it's good to know that it's there and then it's your choice whether or not you want to okay. now go down the page or stay reading. But it, it's not too much verbosity to hear that it's a same page link versus a link. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. All right, that was perfect. We are at time. Thank you, Mark, for your time and walking us through some accessibility basics on the UCOP website and across the web. The and thank you to everyone for your interest in accessibility and spending your time with us today.